Well, tennis folks of YouTube.com, we are at the quarterfinals of Wimbledon, and it looks a lot different than we thought it would probably look. But I'm looking at these matchups, and I'm thinking, like I teased yesterday, Federer Djokovic is the most probable final at this point. So are we headed towards a 2019 rematch in the final of the 2021 Wimbledon? It looks like it. We'll see. Is it going to happen? Let's break down these matchups, get into the details, and see what are the chances of our favorites getting through, and what would a rematch look like of you know one of the most insane matches of the last few years on the men's side of the tour. So this is the slice presented by Rally Tennis Wimbledon coverage of 2021, the championships. Let's get into the weeds. Things are getting hot. Things are getting hot. The pressure is building. Both camps. I've seen a lot of talk from Feder camps, uh, Djokovic camps, uh, talking about a lot of different things. Djokovic camps are saying the organizers are making it easy for Fed. I'm like, are you nervous? Are you nervous of a 40-year-old man with three knee surgeries coming to get you? That's weird. Feder fans are, you know, they're, t- they're talking about, they're, they are nervous about facing Djokovic, which makes sense. He's won the last three times I've met in the final at Wimbledon. So lots to get, there's lots of drama, lots of pressure building. It's getting hot. I don't know what's going to happen, but what I do know is going to happen is you're going to join Rally Tennis. You're going to download the app, and then you're going to find local leagues and players to play with in your area, uh, compete in the leagues, compete in playoffs, and dominate your local tennis scene because it's the best app to do all of that on. You also get lots of other things. Like we've said, all tournament, you get uh, access to different discounts with merch or equipment at, at Tennis Warehouse, and they do lots of other things like giveaways. Just It's just the center place for your tennis life. It's Rally app. It's the Rally Tennis app, and you're going to download it with the link below. Thank you. Shout out to Rally Tennis for being a presenting sponsor of the Slice during this Wimbledon tournament, which I feel is about to just, it's about to just turn up. Absolutely. We saw the last fourth round match finish today. Medvedev losing to her coach. He'd be her coach, nicest guy on tour, friend of the show. He played like perfect grass court tennis when they came out today. Medvedev didn't really have his best stuff because it looked like Medvedev was kind of going to win fairly easily. Uh, he's he had dropped a set, but he hadn't gotten broken in a long time. And then, and then Hubie Hercats came out and played really good, served huge today, and caused the upset. That's a big upset because when people were looking at this on the bottom, it's like kind of like you know most of the dangerous players in this draw were on the bottom with Federer. So Federer was going to ha- have a hard time beating Medvedev probably Berrettini, and then playing Djokovic. That's an insanely hard route to the final. But now he's got to beat her coach, which Federer's the favorite in that for sure. Uh, and then if Federer was to play Berrettini, I think he'd be the favorite as well. But it'd be very close, obviously. So anyways, let's look at the matchups in the quarterfinals. This is what the quarterfinals we thought was going to look like. This is the probable based on the seedings. And now this is what it actually looks like. Pretty, you know, obviously some similarities. But the main thing is that Djokovic and Federer are the only guys, I think, who have been to the quarterfinals at Wimbledon before. The other six players are first-timers. So that gives more reason that Federer Djokovic is the most probable final. Before we get into it, like and subscribe to this video. Like this video if you're a Djokovic fan. Like it if you're a Berrettini fan. Like this video if you are a Fukovic diehard fan. And like it if you're a Federer fan as well. It helps with the show. Thanks for subscribing. We love you guys. Matchups. Djokovic versus Fucevic. I'm saying Fucevic from now on. I think that's the way it is. Djokovic has a 2-0 head-to-head head, head record. But as people have said, the matches have been tight. They've been tight. Fucevic is the type of player that can hurt Djokovic because it's not just all about blasting the ball by Djokovic. If you can mix it up on him and, and make him not play with just perfect pace the whole match, he's going to have a harder time. And that's what Fucevic can do. Um, he took a set and was up a break at the US Open in 2018. So Fucevic knows how to get sets off of him. He knows how to play well. And he's been playing well. He just took out Rublev. Um, so Djokovic has to serve well and he has to be aggressive and play his game. Cause like Chris Fowler in our talk, new friend of the show said to me, there is no way that Djokovic doesn't have some wear and tear on his body from the French open from just, you know, winning that playing the tournament of clay before that and coming it right into this. There's no way that he's not getting a little bit tired. So in the last two matches, he has not served particularly well. Um, he's only just, he hasn't had, he hasn't even had up to 60% of his first serves in. So that's b- below where it needs to be as he plays better players, which, you know, might never happen in this tournament against Fucevic. He's going to have to serve good because Fucevic can be aggressive and he can hit a clean ball on this grass. And he's, and he's been aggressive. 
Fucevic has to stay focused. He has to serve well. Everyone's got to serve well, but he's got to serve well because uh, Djokovic is obviously the GOAT returner. And he's got to mix it up uh, and then play physical. If Fucevic can make this match physical, if it's a slower grass court, I think that helps helps Fucevic because, you know, outside of Djokovic, who's the more beastly type guy on tour? Probably the only guy is Fucevic because, you know, Brad Gilbert was like objectifying his pipes uh, the whole time in his match versus Rublev. But Fucevic can make this physical, and he just has to play well and not miss. And ba- he doesn't have to, like, redline, but he's got to, like, play very well and hope that Djokovic doesn't have his best. And I think it could be interesting. But I am definitely taking Djokovic in that matchup. Shapovalov versus Hatchinov. Shapovalov's won their only matchup so far at the Davis Cup. They both have massive games. Shapovalov is more versatile. I think just right now he's the better player. It makes sense. He's seeded higher. He's the number 10 seed, I think. Kachanov is the number 18 seed. Um, Shapo just needs to play the way that he has been playing, and he will definitely win this match, I think. If The only way Kachanov is going to win is if he can get Shapovalov off his game, and Shapovalov starts missing a lot, and Shapovalov can't break Kachanov. Shapovalov, though, has served super well about, against R- or returned super well against RBA. Totally different serve, obviously, in this matchup. But if he can make Kachanov defend on the forehand and get some breaks, then it's going to be, I think, it could be one-sided for Shapovalov. And I'm definitely cheering for Shapovalov because it would be awesome to see another Canadian and a guy like Shapovalov in the semifinals of Wimbledon on course to play Djokovic. That would be cool. Berrettini versus Felix auger Aliassime, FAA, who just stepped up and had the biggest win in his career versus Zverev. Berrettini, he's one of the favorites coming in. I put money on him when it was like 22-1 to 1 odds, and that's changed big time since then. So... I might just cash out here because it's already out. But Matteo is the favorite for sure. But this is a winnable match for FAA because Matteo's serve is his biggest weapon. But Felix is long, so he can get a lot of rackets on balls, especially on the serve. And if he can find a way to get a break or two, get some looks on Berrettini's serve, then it becomes a lot more interesting. If they can get into rallies, uh, the longer it goes, I almost favor you know Felix more if he can just not miss. He can't be overly aggressive once again, so it gets in the rallies, but he's got to be obviously careful of the Berrettini fear hand. So, I don't know. I'm choosing Berrettini in this match, but I like Felix Alge. I see him. Obviously, he's Canadian, and I'm going to root for him probably because also, as I'm a Federer guy, I don't really want to see him play Berrettini because Berrettini is Scaratini, okay? He's gonna, he scares us all. Federer versus Hercotch. He beat nice guy Hercotch. Federer has to play very well for this not to get complicated. Uh, Hubert Hercotch is good and long, and he's playing really well on the grass. Obviously, he just beat Medvedev. So Federer needs like 77% plus win rate on his first serve, and he's got to serve better than he has. He hasn't been getting a lot of free points. Well, he's got to, been getting a lot of free points, but not a lot of aces, and aces just calm you down uh, when he can get those. So like, if he can serve like 15 aces above, I can't see him losing this match. But it'll be interesting because Hubert Hercotch has returned super well against Medvedev very hard and deep. And if, Me- and if Hercotch can get Federer on the back foot, then that's going to be positive for Hercotch all day long. Um, so that's, that's a losable match for Federer for sure. Obviously, Hubert Hercotch is a great player. Um, so yeah, very interesting matchups. They're all interesting. I think the most straightforward one is probably Djokovic versus Fukovic. Next would be, I don't know, Kapovalov versus Kachanov, Bertini, FAA. I think Federer, Federer versus Hercotch is still tight just because we don't, you know, Federer's getting back closer to 2019 Fed every match. And he's looking pretty good. He's just not fully there with the forehand, with the movement slightly, and with the serving. So it can all get better, uh, but it might not because Herbert, you know, these guys are all good players. And they're all young, but youth can sometimes, ignorance, youth, youthfulness can just sometimes make players just not, not get overthink about the moment, but it all can also ruin them. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see. But like I said, Federer versus Djokovic is officially the most probable final. Uh, I think they had it as before Medvedev lost, it was Medvedev Djokovic was the most probable final. But I think officially it's Federer Djokovic, or it should be, um, which is going to be insane. I don't. Which fan base is more nervous for that? I don't know. As a Federer fan, I'm pretty nervous going into that because I'm like, I don't want. I hate seeing Fed lose. But the same vibe I had in 2014, 15, and 2019 when he went into it, I was like, look, Djokovic is a favorite, big time. I love seeing Federer play. I just want to see him have one more kick at the can. Uh, and then in 2019, he brought us all the way to the line where literally this far, the ball hit the tape. Djokovic chose the wrong way. That was how close it was to Federer beating Djokovic. So we have lots of reason to think that he can do it again. Um, it's two years later, which hurts Federer. Um, so I don't know. But Djokovic, who knows? But if I'm a Djokovic fan, they, you guys seem a little bit nervous because you keep talking about, oh, Federer gets all the center courts. Oh, why does he get all this draw? Like Medvedev lost. Wow, look at how easy it is. Are you guys – what do you guys – 
What are you guys, nervous? Your goat, are you nervous about him playing a 40-year-old former goat, as you would say? That's a little bit. That's showing some signs of doubt in your mind, I think. So I don't know. It'll be interesting. It'll be passionate. As we get to the semifinals and Federer Djokovic are still in a way, they get to the final. Oh, man, it's going to get hot, and people are going to start freaking out, and the fan bases will go to battle. And if they make it to the final, it'll just be epic. It'll just be epic again, and it'll be another celebration of tennis because we're lucky to be alive watching these two guys play still. So that's my thoughts on the quarterfinals. What are yours? Leave them in the comment section below, and we will debate there. Also, check out TheSliceTennis.com for live updates, articles about you know the Canadians doing their thing, the Brits falling out. Uh, it's all happening on our website, TheSliceTennis.com. It is your hub for Wimbledon coverage. Thank you to our sponsor, Rally Tennis, for presenting The Slice during Wimbledon. We will see you next time here on the channel. I can't wait for quarterfinal Tuesday, Wednesday. It's going to be amazing.